Leia? Yeah? I have some bad news. What? What happened? My, my quality necklace. It broke after our last recording. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to celebrate Pride Month. Would would doing would doing a podcast about pride and LGBTQ plus subjects help? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll do that then. I'm Lamont, and I believe that people are unique and special. And I'm Leia. Welcome to Pride Month, baby. <laughs> and you're tuning into the Lamont and Leia Podcast. Leia, you're so right. Happy Pride Month. In addition to like Pride Month, June being Pride Month, I found three, three interesting like holidays mm -hmm. that pop up in june okay. so the first one is june 8th national best friends day nice <laughs> we're going on a date <laughs> um the second one is international picnic day because i love picnics and the last one is june 19th which is Father's Day, but also Juneteenth. And I've only recently, like in the last, I think two, maybe mm -hmm. three years, learned about Juneteenth. Yes, me too. We'll have, I think we need to do an episode about that eventually. Cool. But anyway. <laughs> Let's. Um, so today, yes. oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna ask you, what are we talking about today, Lamont? <laughs> so today, Leia, we are talking about understanding the lgbt plus community we're gonna have so many guests like lots of guests lots of thoughts lots of opinions and i'm just so excited to talk to each in these each of these individuals and have an amazing conversation but before we do i have a cheer are you ready leia a cheer a cheer okay, okay. all right this is new <laughs> this is new this is new so out of the Stonewall Riots, Pride was born. And now we celebrate the past, the present, and our hopes for the future. Cheers to Pride Month. Woo! Welcome, 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 everyone. We are so excited that you have joined us on the Lamont and Leia podcast to have an amazing talk today. Please go ahead and introduce yourselves. Um, Leia's going to start to kind of give us the example, and then I'll go next. And then um, do you guys want to like go in ABC order, or do you guys just like want to like try to pop in whenever you can? I think it might be more organized if you just like call on us one by one. And then all right. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> all right. Uh, so to keep it really brief, because there's so many of us, we're going to do a really shortened version of our usual intro. Um, for anyone who's seen our podcast or listened to our podcast before, you know, usually we like to let our guests like introduce themselves and take their time. But we're going to keep it really short and sweet. Uh, so my name is Leah. My pronouns are she, her. Um, currently, I am a stay at home sister. Don't ask. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. So I'm Lamont. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I work as a group facilitator for South Coast Community Services. It's a mental health facility. Cool, cool. All right. And then let's go ahead and go with James. Hey, everybody. I am James. I'm he, him, bitch, brat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have my own little podcast. I'm an author and I also run a security company. Excellent. Let's go with William. Hello, everyone. My name is William. I am non binary. I go by she, they, she only because I'm a people pleaser and I hate controversy. Um, 
I work for HR for FedEx. That's it right now. All right. Let's go with Vladimir. Hello. <clears throat> um, my pronouns are she, he, ze, or zir. And I am ge a genderqueer. I'm both male and female. Um, I work for Amazon as in the warehouse. And I think that's pretty much it. All right. Let's go with Travis. Uh, my name is Travis. I go by he, him. And uh, I'm an entertainer, entertainer, performer, uh, tattoo artist. And uh, that's pretty much it, yeah. All right, let's go with Nikki. Hey there, I'm Nikki. Um, I thought I was a she, her, but my partner has started calling me they, them, and I'm not mad about it. <laughs> um, so she, they. Um, and I just moved to Seattle about a month ago, and I'm working on building my holistic healing business. Nice. Excellent, excellent. Let's go with Helix. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Helix, I use they them pronouns and I work in veterinary medicine. Awesome. And last but not least at all, let's go with Mr. or I'm sorry, let's go with Johnny. <laughs> Hello, I'm Johnny Brantler III. I am an actor, artist, activist based in LA and I'm grateful to be here. All right. Of course. So, um, we have some questions for you guys. We like this today's topic is about understanding. We want people to understand us and the different parts of the LGBT plus community. Um, I identify as pansexual as well. Um, my husband, he's gay. Um, and um, there's just so many wonderful parts to the LGBT plus community. Um, why do labels matter? Like we all just introduce ourselves and we use pronouns, we use um, names. Why do labels matter? Do they matter? So for me, labels matter in so far as that they help me connect with others. Um, I have found that the labels I use lately actually give you less information about me. Because <laughs> um, you know, like I, I too identify as pansexual, but in my opinion, that tells you less about who I'm attracted to. Um, but beyond that, um, I kind of let go of labels. You know, I had a really interesting experience in college writing a paper describing myself and I couldn't use any labels. Um, probably the hardest paper I have ever written because um, I couldn't say I was a, a daughter or a sister or a student or a, you know, so I have found value in not putting myself in boxes and trying to figure out like, okay, what am I really trying to get at with this label? Um, so, you know, like my Gemini self, I find value on both sides of the label argument. That answer. I love your answer. Does anyone else want to jump in on their thoughts on this? Yeah, I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, to piggyback off of what she was saying, um, work individually, like me personally, I'm a, at, a, at a place where I believe gender is a construct. It's not something that's real. Um, and so labels as a society uh, helps us to kind of navigate each other and be like, this is who you are. I guess this is what you are. But at the end of the day, it's, the labels aren't real. But just as both sides, as she was saying, um, some of these labels help others kind of affirm who they are and kind of help them with their euphoria and help them to identify who they are. Uh, but as I've said with everything, it kind of just boils down to the individual. Personally, me, uh, because I go by he, they, she pronouns, it's only because I don't care. I don't really have uh, a yearning to be labeled anyway. And labels for me are kind of starting to grow away from me where I'm seeing my sexuality is evolving, my gender is evolving, um, my perception of life is evolving. So I'm kind of growing away from labels where I'm just like, I, for me personally, they don't matter anymore, but I will still respect those who 
really need those labels or want those labels. I, I don't want to say need. So if I am uh, wording things incorrectly, definitely call me out on my shit. So <laughs> sorry about that. All right, William, I, I love what you said. James, did you want to jump in? It looked like you were going to say something. Oh, no, I mean, I just, I love what everyone's saying to me. Labels really don't fucking matter, but a lot of people like to make them matter. So that's why we have to have such visibility to let them know that like we can't be nullified. For me, like sexuality, especially, I've come to realize more and more as I go on this journey that sexuality, you know, it's more about a visual preference that we have i have a visual preference where i prefer the uh, the a man and a man's body and the scent of a man i'm attracted to that but ultimately i fall in love with a soul you know so that's the soul i fall in love with i have a visual preference and i think we put so much chaos on sexuality and i think sexuality overall it's more fluent like i mean in the animal kingdom you'll see that you know animals are attracted to each other regardless of gender and as far as like he she them like everyone should just be respected for whatever energy they're feeling. Ultimately, we're all energy at the end of the day. So if you feel that divine feminine energy and you're in the shell of a man, like more power to you. If you feel you're in the wrong body and you want to make the transformation into a shell that you feel correct in, more power to you. I just think that we have to be visible because unfortunately society tries to nullify us back to like the heterosexual norm. You know that that has to be male female and it's the gender you're born into and everyone has to be straight and procreating and that's just not how we were built as a universe um i just wanted to like touch off a little bit of everybody's um and uh yeah I, absolutely everything is so valid and so i mean beautiful as to what everybody is saying right now and my personal um, experience and just opinion and everything, labels have really, I've begun to like really not like them because of like the complications it brings, which is like sometimes it becomes very unnecessary and it makes people feel uncomfortable and people get very intricate with it sometimes. And me being trans, that is probably one of the biggest things is labels for me. You know, I identify as he, him, only just because of the courage and the power and the just the self-worth that I had to build to create that pronoun for myself, you know? So I definitely own it, you know, but as far as, labels in general I mean god there's just so many like so many and but I liked because there is so much gender fluidity like it is important to recognize pronouns and labels yeah like um the person that was just speaking he um I'm not explaining it but like yeah to better understand that person better help learn that person and better you know respect that person as an individual that's what labels definitely help with yeah. um just to piggyback off of everyone too um i do agree like labels help us kind of define who we are um i'm also that kind of person of like where i'm at um some of us are using it just for identity because we don't still know what our identities are and are figuring it out. Um, for me specifically, labels are there just to see who that, uh, like, um, oh, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Uh, my name? Yes. Travis. Travis was saying, like, um, just to find an individual and respect that individual as a person. And just going off our individuality. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> um, now, I know that Lamont had actually done a lot of work in finding some supplementary uh, TikToks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone for answering. If anyone has anything to add, uh, go ahead and just like speak up, cut in. I don't know. Do, <laughs> do oh, what the... you need. <laughs> Good. 
I just had a little thing that kind of came together as mm -hmm. Vlad was speaking, that sometimes we use labels as experimentation. And when that kind of hit me, I was like, oh, I love that. So I just wanted to throw that last two sets in. I love that too. I love yeah. that too. Yes. Like, yeah, Nikki. <laughs> so yeah. I, actually, I actually had a different video in mind, but as the conversation developed, I kind of planned for this. I was like, I want these other backup videos just in case, like, the conversation goes somewhere else and I can pull that. So here's a video that I think will, like, really, like, kind of wrap up. I'm going to say something somebody's not going to like, and that is that gender is not real. Not even just a social construct, it's just not real. The only thing that is real, factually, biologically speaking, is that some people are born with a peen, some people are born with a vein, some people are born with both. And this is for reproductive purposes only. We as a species, we decided, if you're born with a peen, here's how you're supposed to act. If you're born with a vein, here's how you're supposed to act. Here are the things that you're supposed to wear. Here's the way your hair is supposed to be. Here are the names that you can choose from for yourself. Here are the words you're supposed to use to describe yourself. Here's your role in a relationship. Here's your role in society. Here's your role as a parent. Here's how you're supposed to behave based on the things that we've made up to describe what you are based on what's in your pants. That's it. So if it's all pretend, it's all made up, why can't we just make up other things, make up other words? Why do you care so much? If it's all pretend and it's all made up, maybe we stop fucking bullying kids about it. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, so everyone's loving that video, right? I thought she like, it was so powerful when I saw it and I was like, oh, this video has to be part of the conversation. I would love for you to share that video because I want to hear that shit on repeat because that is, <laughs> no, that is like, you know, I don't think it could have been said any simpler, but like so right. powerful. All of the TikToks that we will use today, we will go ahead and link all of those users down in our show description. So if you want to check them out and go see more of their content or even check out that video for yourself, uh, they'll be down there. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. All right, cool. So I just kind of want to wrap this like topic up. If I'm understanding everyone correctly, we don't find labels important, yet they are important. They're important in the sense that it helps us relate and navigate the world and respect each other. And I'll let Johnny say something. <laughs> and, um, but it's not so important because it's not maybe that big of a deal. And as long as we're just respecting each other, that's all that matters. I'm gonna kick it to you, Johnny. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've also, I love what everyone has shared so far. Um, labels have been something I've been thinking a lot about lately um, because like labels are categorical, right? And like, especially in this capitalistic society where category makes things easier to buy and sell, you know, like it, it, it makes it, it's, it's easier to know what something is so that we can then uh, market it or sell it or, you know, X, Y, Z. But I think what I'm growing to understand is like, even the people, you know, even us introducing ourselves, like there's no way that a label can encapsulate like everything that we are, you know, like we, we just delivered a sliver of this is what I do. Right. But I think that even that, um, for me, that none of what we introduced ourselves really mattered. Um, well, actually, that's what we chose to introduce ourselves as. But at the same time, I think I've grown to understand the importance of duality and multiplicity and that labels don't necessarily, cannot, you know, in the way that the word love, like, is all of these different things and trust is all of these different things. Like, there's no way that we can encapsulate, like, through labels, really anything, you know, like I can use a spoon as a tool, but I can also use it as a murder weapon. I can also use it as a X, Y, you know, as whatever, you know? Um, and so I think like, as we evolve and as um, we become, I think who we're meant to be, I think this lifting the, the veil of, you know, um, of labels is exciting because I think, yes, labels, are important for the system, but the system in itself is what's fucked up. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? So like labels in the matrix are, yes, we need, we need them to navigate. But in terms of like, especially for the LGBTQIA2 plus community, like we are the people that 
are transcending and are guiding humanity into furtherment. And I think that there is no way that labels can can encapsulate who we are. And so I think, yeah, I don't think that they matter as much for the people who are much more interested in living outside of the matrix as it is for people that do, you know, um, cause labels are safe, but um, yeah. yeah, that's, those are just some thoughts that I had while listening to everybody. And yeah, I, I like what everyone has had to say so far. Check. That's right. <laughs> I love that, Johnny. Yes. I just had like one thought to add to it because um, what I love what he said was like, it's impossible, it's almost arrogant for us to, to categorize ourselves into like one and two, male and female. And like, even if you're an atheist or if you believe in a higher power, you kind of believe from the higher power, um, we're all made in their image. And it's like, if we're all them, we're all one, we're all the same. And then those who believe in science, like my atomical, Adam is made up of the same thing that this is made out of. So I'm also a deodorant stick and I'm also a tree and I'm also, so it's like, it's arrogant to be like, I'm just a man, I'm just a woman, I'm just this, I'm just that. Like, that was, that was really good. I appreciate your words, Johnny. You're the most beautiful uh, deodorant stick I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Will, what I'm getting from that is, we are people and we are beautiful and that's all that really truly matters yes like it you know there's a huge difference between doesn't and should it and it shouldn't matter as to what we want to identify ourselves as you know but it does matter so it shouldn't matter, but it does matter, you know, because it's like, it matters to the extent that people need to respect what we choose to label, identify ourselves as individuals, as mm -hmm. not what society says we should be. Yeah. Yes. Or how to be. Yeah. That's actually a really great segue into our next question. Um, have you ever experienced uh, an interaction with someone or multiple people um, who didn't want to use your chosen labels, pronouns, name, etc.? What was your experience like, if some of you don't mind sharing? So my experience, I think, is very unique here because it's only recently that I've started playing with pronouns and nicknames and really exploring my, my identities of all kinds. Um, so my experience with like people not respecting how I want to identify was basically my whole life growing up because I grew up in the Christian faith. And so I feel like I was um, I was damned before I started. Um, and so just growing up being told that like, none of this is okay. So I didn't bother exploring it. You know, when I was, when I was in high school, I started saying I was straight plus one, cause there was like one female that I was attracted to. And then it was straight plus a few. And eventually I was like, wait a minute, there's a trend here. We are not straight and it's okay. Um, but it was like, it was like, I was doing it to myself because of how I was raised. Um, and that just, that has been a whole experience. And thank goodness I'm in Seattle now with people who are helping me explore all of this stuff. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd share that little bit of like, yes, but in a weird way. So hopefully other people have some um, experiences more akin to what I think this question was trying to ask. Seattle, one of the gay meccas. <laughs> Well, growing up in SoCal, yo, like just a couple hours south of San Fran, it's been cool to like be somewhere that like it really is a mecca. So like pull through, yo, come check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right, go ahead, Travis. Um, can you repeat the question just so I like it just kind of... <laughs> ADHD is one son of a bitch, man. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so our question is, have you ever had any experience where someone did not want to uh, call you by your either chosen name, pronoun, or whatever other label or identity you may use? 
Um, since I have, you know, really, really found myself and was even in a point in my life where I could actually be myself and do what I knew was right for myself. Um, it has not happened, but growing up, up until maybe about 18, early 20s, like it was difficult, uh, mainly from my family, um, you know, and growing up, uh, even about like five years old, I would hear these stories and my family would laugh about it and be like, you know, I would be like, you know, I wish I, I wish I was a boy, you know, and then, you know, I'd get responses, but you're not. And, you know, and I would try to wear like, I'd want to wear like swim trunks, you know, swimming with, with other kids. And, but they would put me in, you know, bathing suits and I didn't want to wear that. And I would tell them, I don't want to wear this. I want to wear these. And they're like, but that's not what girls do. And, um, and then getting older, um, you know, it, that was a very much of a huge struggle of no acceptance from my family, not even when I got older and expressed that, you know, I, I mean, even, even the word transgender to me is like a lot of people in the trans community, it, it's a little difficult sometimes because I don't like outing myself because I don't feel it matters. It shouldn't matter to anybody because I don't need anybody looking at me different, thinking of me different. Like the person that is in front of you, this is me. This is me and this is who I am. What I am telling you is I am a man and you know, I, these are my pronouns, stuff like that. Um, and you know, I have not had any issues. I've had lots of support um you know with friends and stuff like that with helping me change my name and stuff like that and helping me you know teach people like you need to teach people you need to help them learn to to go by your name not by even if they're used to this certain name it doesn't matter you know like and if they accept that then they are supposed to be in your life and if they don't then you might need to, you know, think, think about that a little bit, you know, because like I spent my uh, majority of my life trying to make everyone else happy. And like, if, if somebody wasn't accepting of it, then I'd be like, okay, well, we'll I don't know. We'll try to figure out how we can, you know, help with this. And, um, but yeah, just, there was not a lot of acceptance growing up that, yeah, that, you know, even with my, born name um you know some of my family was like I can't call you that like I, I I cannot call you Travis I don't know you as that and so to this day that's why I have no contact with any of my family anymore because it got to it got to a toxic point where I'm like if you can't respect me and my happiness then yeah that's that gotta look out for yourself <clears throat> yes yeah <sighs> Travis, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. And um, I wanna definitely open up the floor to other people, but I kinda wanna show two videos to continue this conversation. Cause I think what Travis was saying is um, very heartfelt. I will never understand people who feel like they have the right to determine the validity of another person's identity. There are folks who will deny my truth and say, if you want me to respect your beliefs, then you have to respect mine. But my gender is who I am, not what I believe. My gender and your beliefs about my gender do not exist on the same plane. What would make more sense is if you said, if you want me to respect your gender, then you have to respect my gender, which I do. I gender you correctly, use your correct pronouns, your correct name. I am only 
only asking for the same simple courtesy. The truth is, you have no right to an opinion about who I am and the language that I use to understand my experience in this body. The same way I have no right to an opinion about your identity. If my beliefs are that everyone should have the freedom to exist as their truest selves, and your beliefs are that only people like you deserve that freedom, then it is objectively clear who is in the right. I love you and do better. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm not just gonna call people by whatever made up name they give themselves. Is that so? Who is this? It looks rather familiar. Unless you said Curtis James Jackson III, you're lying to yourself. But let's try again. How about this one? I'm sure you've seen this guy before. This might be a shock to you. His first name is not Ashton, but that's okay, let's try again. Obviously you know who Norma Jean Mortensen is. What's that? You call her Marilyn Monroe? But that's just so strange to me. Because it sounds like you've been calling people what they prefer to be called your entire life. The only difference is that in your head, somehow the people I've mentioned in this video are far more worthy of your respect. Because you don't see trans people as your equal, which makes it easier for you to concoct some excuse in your mind to not respect their pronouns and not respect their names. This conversation is embarrassing for you. Next time, just say you're a bigot and move on. <laughs> that last line. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> All right. No, it goes, um, like, me with my experiences, like, the funny thing is, like, coming out when I identified as cisgendered, um, you know, 10, 11 years old, I didn't even know about these these words, about sexuality, all that, you know. Um, people would always call me a girl because I was so feminine or whimsical. So it was like, they were misgendering me back then. It was, well, you're a girl, you're this, you're she. And it's like, okay, well, so growing up and knowing well, but my parents told me I'm this. So like, so I'm this and I'm telling you I'm this and you're still not respecting that. So then finally coming into my own and being like, okay, you know what? They're right. Like, I'm not a boy, but I'm not a girl either. Like, that's, I don't feel that way. And I'm finally coming into like my identity. And then everyone's like, oh, oh no, 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 no. You're a man. You were born a man, so now you're a man. It's like, but you were just telling me that I was a girl, and now you're telling me I'm a man. So what is it? What is it? Because it looks like you just want to insult me. It just sounds like you disrespect me, and that's all it is. So just say that, you know. And I, me and Leon have had this conversation where we talk about words, and we hear certain words, and immediately we go into like the extreme negative. So like we hear the word consequence, and we think oh shit, that's because I did something bad. And so here's the consequence. Like, no, not necessarily. Like you do something and whatever happens is the consequence of that action. You know, I went to school, I graduated. The consequence is I got a degree. Awesome. Um, so people will hear transphobia and because they don't want to be negative or they'll hear the things like racism, like, no, I'm not racist. I have a black friend. No, I'm not transphobic. I just think it's like, Yes, you are. There's a level to transphobia and racism that you are clinging to that you need to unpack and unlearn and move on. All right. Right now, this is making you a bad person because you don't want to own up to your shit. All you need to do is own up to it, learn from it, unpack it and move on. But if you're going to continue to be compliant to transphobia, racism, so on and so forth, then that's what we're going to call you. If the shoe fits, darling. No. Um, picking back to what Will said, um, same situation with me. Um, me growing up, like um, my family would say, oh, you're a girl, you're a girl. Um, it was a very toxic masculinity point of view. Like it was, um, even now they have a hard time. I feel really bad for my, um, for certain family members. I don't wanna out them. Um, because um, just like myself, I am, they're also gender, gender queer and um, non-binary spectrum. Um, they're still trying to identify who they are and experimenting um, their identity or finding their life. And for myself, I'm still continuing and trying to find who am I or what, um, to what degree, where am I, you know? And for a long time, like my parents, not only my parents, um, my parents didn't know what it meant to grow up with a child that, that had so many thoughts and so many um, of like, I'm not this, I'm not that. Um, so there's like, oh, this is what men are supposed to do. This is what girls are supposed to do. Um, and it's not, 
it's not okay, first of all, because um, a lot of times I end up arguing with them and they just like, well, that's not, that's not how, that's not normal. I was like, well, what is normal? Because your normal is, um, your normal is that violence is okay. My normal is that violence isn't okay to a certain degree, you know? And so where do we stand there as, as you being my parent and trying to be someone exempl exemplifying and respecting when you yourself don't respect others and who they identify as? Um, most of the time when it comes to those altercations, I don't talk to them. I don't have them on any social media. I don't. Um, unless it's a cousin of mine, luckily, um, I've been blessed with a lot of cousins that have, have apologized and they've moved on forward. It's like, you know what? I was in the wrong. I shouldn't have said those things. Um, but bullying is very, is an outlet because our parents didn't know how to actually appreciate or even show love, you know, at least my parents, you know, and certain family members, um, that are first immigrant, like, um, just giving a little bit more background. Um, I'm actually a first, um, for first born here in the United States. And a lot of those things are coming from untouched, um, untouched topics that they don't want to talk about. And honestly, um, I'm also to the point where it's like, they, they have to do that healing on their own and I'm doing my own healing on my own. And pretty much when it comes down to it, just like what um, what the earlier person said, um, you're gonna have to decide who is gonna be more important to have in your life and you're gonna have to decide, is this really worth it or is this not worth it and just move on to something else. Move on to new people, new people that you call family, you know. Yeah, that's it, that's all my take. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vladimir, for sharing um, your side and your portion. And um, how, coming from um, being a first generation um, native here from El Salvador, yeah. I would really like to hear from Helix if you would like to speak up on this. Um, I mean, I have had um, some pretty intense experiences, not really so much growing up, just because like I was raised in the South, so you didn't really have a choice um you know being trans wasn't even a thing they're obviously trying their best right now with all the bills that are out and and all the laws that they're making to make sure that trans children aren't supported or validated and i mean that's just been texas's history um which is where i was uh raised um so the idea of being trans like wasn't really um anything for me to think about i mean the closest thing that i had was um, I remember when I first heard one of the first terms that I heard um, that I identified with was like someone with, who was androgynous um, and I was like that kind of sounds like what I am like I'm not really like masculine but I'm not really feminine either um, and then I forgot what it was called um, oh a metrosexual uh, man I remember when I first heard that and I like saw someone who was like described as that as like a man who was just like really clean um, and like, you know, really kept together and like really took care of themselves. Um, you know, I was like, oh, that sounds like, you know, something that I could like identify with. And I really like, as I was growing up, I didn't really understand like gender queer or, you know, non-binary people weren't really like like, I mean, they were a thing, like they existed, but like the idea of being non-binary just wasn't like really taught. Um, so um, it wasn't until I really got older. I mean, honestly, I've, I've only started to socially transition for about like a year and a half now. Um, and I mean, the, the flourishing that's come with it has been beautiful, but there's also been a lot of backlash, especially from um, you know, I have family members that are very religious that, you know, I think they were prepped for me to come out as queer, but I don't think they were prepped for me to come out as trans. Um, and so uh, doing a whole name change and having them use appropriate pronouns and ungendered um, language with me, um, you know, I get a lot of resistance from family members on that. 
Um, I have had to kind of like give up friends because of my transition. Um, I face a lot of like workplace violence because there are people at work who like love to use gendered language and just can't get that through their head. And rather than just like leaving me alone, which is what I would like, um, they tend to be almost like obsessive and insistent with, um, it almost feels like targeting me. Um, so it hasn't been easy, um, but I will say that I am grateful that I have found spaces and places and people that um, can hold me and, and can hold my totality um, and, you know, see me as like a full human being and not just, you know, what I present as. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's trials and tribulations. Um, I think coming from, because I'm half Black and half Mexican, so it's really uh, coming from two minority uh, side families. It's been a very different experience from both. Um, and then kind of, you know, working in veterinary medicine, it's, uh, it's a, what's it called? It's like a career that is dominated by cisgendered heterosexual white people. So, you know, and it's a very old um, industry. So there's a lot of people that are a lot older that are unwilling to accept that they're able to learn new things. Um, even though I know that that's not true because I have family members who have been supportive and they're older than some of my coworkers. So um, it can be intense some days. Um, and I just really am at a point in my life where I um, seek joy where joy finds me. Felix, thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate um, learning about you and your background and some of the struggles. And I'm glad you have found some safe places to land. That is so important. So it is, it is close to one o'clock. And I know some people had to go. If you have to go, it is okay. William had to leave us. We want to thank William for being here. I do want to continue this conversation. Um, does anyone else want to chime in before we move to the next question? Um, so again, like, I mean, just speaking on uh, the transgender aspect, you know, the reason why, like, um, you know, I think it's so important, like, why labels are important and, or no, 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 um, to uh, respect gender and stuff like that is because, so with labels and gender, the reason why I don't like to personally out myself is because I've noticed, you know, some, unless you are identifying, you know, as a gay trans man, you know, um, that's different, but for me personally, like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm straight and, um, and I've told a lot of my trans friends, like, it's very important unless you like know the person to not out yourself because you then put yourself in a very dangerous position because you never know if the right person, if the wrong person is gonna hear you talk about you being transgender and that could lead to, which there has been experiences of rape and violence and stuff like that, because, you know, that's when it gets into the whole, oh, it's because you've never, you know, been with the real man and da, 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 you know, like stuff like that. It's just, you know, I don't, I think it's very important to have everybody keep their, you know, personal labels and what they identify themselves as to themselves unless they feel comfortable sharing it you know because you know there's just there's yeah that's that's mainly speaking for you know ftms you know because you know i think it's great it's always great to be proud and to be loud about it you know but there's a the right place and right time and to make sure you're in a safe environment to do so Travis, I think you bring to light a very important privilege that a lot of hetero people get. They can be themselves 24 seven, um, as obnoxious as they want, as impolite or rude as they want, 
um, with maybe no consequence. I mean, there are some consequences, right? People like backlashing and saying, hey, like that's not okay, standing up. Great, I love that, let's keep doing that. But for the most part, um, it's acceptable in a lot of circles, right? And they don't have to worry about safety. They don't have to worry about being harmed by someone else. I would say women have to worry about harm, being harmed by men than men being harmed by other men, but that does happen as well, right? So um, there is a lot of privilege that comes with the hetero um, um, circle that they don't understand the fear of um, being taken advantage of or um, forced to do something because they think we don't understand or we don't know what's going on or we haven't had those experiences. Right. And in the, and my second one was, um, you know, working in the entertainment industry and, you know, being a performer, you know, for as long as 10 years, you know, lots of different clubs, lots of different vibes, different people, different energies, different, I mean, everything. Um, very passionate about what I do. But yeah, just, I mean, sometimes even in the LGBT community, like there's even still some kind of drama like towards each other. And, and I feel pretty strongly, especially towards transgenders because either, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but all I know from personal experience is I've, you know, been hit on by guys and, you know, and I am, I, my, like, at first, I don't really know how to respond because I always get this, like, um, I'm a shy person. Like, it's, yeah, whatever. And uh, so I'm like, oh, thank you, you know, and whatever. And, um, you know, and, but he'll try to talk to me. And as I'm, like, oblivious that he's hitting on me, um, I'll be like, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, no, I'm trans. And, and he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm trans, like, I don't, whatever. And he's like, um, he's like, what was his response? It was like, oh, so you're not a real man then. And it's, it's just one of those things where just from experience, like, that's why it's, I just feel like it's important to just be aware of who you are, you know, um, I guess, representing yourself and identifying yourself, you know, because, yeah, it's it's complicated sometimes. Like, it can get very complicated. Yeah. I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, obviously, yeah. that was a bigoted gay. No offense, but... Yeah, and there um, there can be bigoted gays, right? Or maybe gays that don't understand. Or maybe gays that don't realize what they're doing or how understand that they themselves have internal homophobia or transphobia, right? Yeah, yes. Oh, um, I was just going to say, you know, at the end of the day, we're none of these things and we're all of these things. The truth is like, we are just souls in a body, you know, and we're all of these things and none of these things. And, you know, Travis was sent here to experience this journey of, of you know, now like I, I don't want to say the words trans, but you know, the transformation journey, we are here to understand sexuality. And at the end of the day, it shouldn't fucking matter whatsoever you know but i think it is important for us to have visibility and be loud about it so the people behind us know that it is normal to feel this way it should be normal at this point you know homosexuality uh, people transitioning people using different pronouns in their outside shell it should be normal at this point because it's part of the journey but you know it's and the major thing for me is that i'm really learning over these last couple of years is i have to forgive society because society is living on an old script. You know, these people, you know, and gay men included, like the, the own bigotry in our community, we're living on old scripts, you know? And everyone, the, the hate that we see in this world, it's not born within us, it's what we're taught. And especially like with like the straight community towards the gay community, a lot of times they were taught to react that way, you know? and gay gay people you know like the masculine for masculine shit like that shit drives me fucking insane man like how are you gonna do that within our own community dude like but it's an old script that we're slowly tearing apart and i think that this 
generation we're seeing right now has the opportunity to tear this script apart and make it the yes. norm. Yeah. You can be of any sexuality. You can be of any gender identity, but you know, the old dinosaur is dying loud, you know, and everything we're seeing going down is the old script dying very loudly. So we have to stay visible. We have to understand that this hate that we're seeing, we have to forgive people because it's just what they were taught and it doesn't make it okay, but we have to have the understanding that we're totally breaking apart generational trauma, generational bullshit. And we have an opportunity to let the, the people coming after us, you can be whoever the fuck you want to be. You don't feel you're in the correct shell. I honor that. And I'm going to be there and hold your hand as you make that transformation. Yeah. You know, you, you feel feminine energy inside and you're in a man shell. Shit, I'll call you she, whatever you need to, call, you know, to enjoy your life journey, you know? So yes. none of it matters and all of it matters. Yes. No, I, I absolutely agree, you know, with you because, you know, I, I'm raising an, uh, an 11 year old son of mine and, you know, through, through raising him and, you know, parenting and everything, like, I don't forget where I come from. You know, even though I identify as a straight man, I am still a part of the LGBT community and I will always be loud and proud about that, you know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's definitely, you know, with my experience of not necessarily wanting to out myself, but that's why I make sure to do it in the right places only because of situations that you just never know that person's upbringing or how, how yeah, how homophobic, transphobic they may be. I mean, you just, the wrong person could hear it at some point, you know? And so, and that experience, you know, with that happening to him being like, so you're not a real man then. Okay, yeah, okay, you know, glad I didn't uh, keep, you know, trying with this and it's like, Okay, first of all, I am no less of a man than any man out there. So, yeah, yeah, you can you can go, you can go, and just uh, that that is uh, that is some energy that needs to go somewhere, yeah, somewhere else. So, you know, because my my boy, you know, he loves RuPaul's. You know, he loves. I mean, he's super androgynous, has very feminine energy you know, and embraces it. And because I have helped learn, teach him, I take him to prides. I like, you know what I mean? I want him to understand these things, you know, go, you know, going back to what he was saying, like, yeah, because everybody's still going off of this old script, you know, there needs to be a lot more knowledge, like in the all over spectrum. So that way people, yeah, can really help us break of that. <laughs> Yeah, of their old script, you know, yeah. and just yeah, everybody should allow should be allowed to live their life however they want to live it, and by who they want to live it, and everything like it doesn't it shouldn't matter. And you have every right to feel safe, Travis. And you know when you let people know about your journey, because you're right, you are a straight man because that is the energy you feel within, and you deserve to be respected. You know, I love that, you know, we refuse to be silenced as well. And I love that you honor that as well. But it's just a lot of confusion. It's a lot of pre-programming. Like I had, and I'll shut up after this, but I had a coworker who's very, very liberal. And he's amazing. I love him most of the time. But we're talking something about transgender. And he said like, oh, come on, you would never be with a transgender man. And this is someone pretty, you know, understanding about, you know, the community, even though he's, you know, quote, unquote, straight. And I looked at him and said, why wouldn't I be with a transgender man? Yeah, why wouldn't I? Yeah. No, why? Yeah, why? Yeah. And I said, I fall in love with souls. I said, I have a visual preference for a man. I like the way a man looks. I like facial hair. I like, you know, touching a man. Like, so if, I, if I'm with someone that has a visual outline of a man and I fall in love with that soul, I, you better bet that I'm going to be with that person. And it kind it's of all about back. hearts, not parts. Yeah. So, I mean, it, all of it doesn't matter at the end of the day, but we need to make it matter. So the people behind us stop fucking killing themselves or, right. you know, I think straight people yeah. also don't realize how much that we put pressure on sexuality that a lot of them are in marriages with men <laughs> that want to be with other men, you know? And it's, a, when I was in the sex industry, I was sleeping with a lot of men that went home to wives and children. I'm not proud of that. 
but we put this pressure on men to behave like men and be only attracted to women. And, you know, you're causing misery all over the place. We didn't come to this earth for a misery journey. We came here for an enlightenment journey. All right. So there is three of us left because other people had to do other things. I do want to continue a few more questions. Um, and James, you were talking about old scripts, right? One old script that I kind of want to jump into is that gay people are so sexual. Like, why are they so sexual? Why are they like always like like talking about sex and doing this and doing that and stuff? What is your guys' experience with that? It's not because I'm gay, it's the ADHD. They're unrelated. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and there's I our love, answer. Moving on. Oh my, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, if I, I can be live right now. <laughs> if, if I can go real quick, um, I am a very sexual gay man, so I don't want to be a hypocrite about it. But I also believe, again, it goes to predestinated roles. You know, I see this a lot in recovery, like for the gay community there's certain roles we're allowed to play in society to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And we have to be the snarky, quippy gay guy, or we have to be the overly sexualized, horny, like best friend to a straight girl. So I think a lot of us find safety in playing a certain role that society mm -hmm. will accept us in. So we have to be, you know, blatantly funny, or we have to be blatantly sexual for people to feel comfortable with us being gay, if that makes sense. Like if we play the role they're used to, if like we're a character from Will and Grace, we're good. But if you're more, much more complicated than that, then people are like, oh, you're not like the character I need you to be for me to accept you. So it's, would you say it's kind of like a, like a safety mechanism for some people? It, yeah, it's like still, playing that role. You know, and I, I see it a lot in the recovery world. Like, you know, I, I'm in recovery from, you know, alcoholism and i see a lot of people where you got to get really honest and you know especially in orange county where it's mostly straight people in the rooms the gay people in the rooms will still try to play the caricature because if we play this certain role then maybe you'll accept us you know for right. the horny gay guy you know it's always like checking out other guys or making jokes then you can accept us if you're much more complex than that they still don't know what to do with us you know yeah. so i think it's a safety zone and I think you're bringing up a very important fact, James, that LGBT plus people want to be accepted. They want to connect. They want to build relationships with all kinds of people. I think that we predominantly have a problem with our own community. I think that's where it starts, where we have to be. I'm speaking just from a gay man. I, I love to hear other people's viewpoints on this but we would have to be the most fabulous, the funniest, the horniest, because that's all we know to go off of. So if we can't solve that problem with our own community, how can we you know, blossom into society in general? That's been my experience. I have to be a certain way or my own community won't accept me, let alone the hetero community. Sexuality um, or being overly sexual is a human trait. I have seen it in groups of girls. I have seen it in groups of straight guys. <laughs> I play Friday Night Magic every night. Those guys are the like funniest sexual people and they'll tell like sexual gay jokes and have no intention on like having sex with their buddies because that's not what they're into but then also like they'll talk about like sure. girls that they banged and like experiences that they've had and they're just completely sexual and it's normal being a sexual person is normal for some people not being a sexual person is normal for some people sexuality wanting to experience that wanting to be funny wanting to be horny or maybe not wanting to be horny but like wanting to like like engage in those kind of conversations is normal for some people and most people we just want to um settle down at the end of the day have that special someone james i've seen you talk about it for years right and like maybe for a short moment there i was trying to like james pick me pick me right <laughs> but it just didn't work out that way and it wasn't supposed to right we're afraid a lot of people are afraid to touch on sexuality because sexuality is dirty you know 
you know, still, I think that regardless of whatever sexuality you're into, that people are afraid to touch on sexuality because it's dirty and you're bad if you want to lean into that. But the truth is, like, I find my most power when I'm having regular sex. You know, I find my most power when all the houses are lit up. And I think, again, like the gay community has had to play into that stereotype to be accepted. So that's why everyone's like, oh, my God, the gay community is so horny and it's like no like we're all horny we're just a little bit louder about it <laughs> there's a lot of people that i don't even think well i know they don't realize how much they are missing out on life because of because of what society has created and you know like you know attraction is the most important thing you know and so that's why we when you were talking about like your co-worker saying that oh yeah you couldn't be with a trans man like why not because it's if you're attracted to somebody and you're sexually attracted to them nothing will matter in that moment and nothing should matter in that moment well, no. well, consent should always matter. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, okay. no, yes, yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But just I'm saying, like, where you know, a lot of closeted people, you know, they're 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 missing out on majority of their life, you know, and then don't realize and come out until they're you know later on in life because they were too afraid to step out of their comfort zone of like well, I know I'm a straight man, so I, therefore I have to be with a woman. And, but why am I having these sexual desires with guys, like of guys, I, I, I don't get it. Oh, but I'm not supposed to, so I'm not gonna focus on it. But then, the, yeah, but then you just, you missed out on possibly meeting the love of your life mm -hmm. because of living a fake life, a fake marriage of, you know, and it's, yeah, that's, pretty much what you know or like with me specifically where you know being an you know fgm transgender like i you know have gone through um like that experience that i shared earlier or um you know there's there's no real way to be a transgender man you know but I get it all the time even though I you know have a very masculine persona and which that is me um but a lot of people have constantly asked if I'm gay you know and they and they express well because you know majority of the, of the trans men that I know are gay you know and are with other men and it's like okay but are you like assuming that we're all like that or i mean do, you know what i mean like that's just conversations that i've had with people that have just really made me like kind of take some time to think of what people's perceptions on i mean just the lgbt community in general even within the community <laughs> yeah no um totally different perception like um, I know there are gay trans men out there. I feel like none of them are around me, though. Like, I've been looking. Um, like, where yeah. are they? Like, why aren't they here? Um, I know yeah, they like, exist. One, one of my friends just moved to Washington, actually. <laughs> and uh, he, no, he's great. He's great. Yeah. But, um, and no, I'm all for it. Like, I, I'm such an open person that I love people. Like, I'm not, you know, just because you know, I identify as straight, doesn't mean that you're going to find me at the straight clubs. Like, hell no, we fucking party. Like, you know, <laughs> so I, I don't really find myself connected at straight clubs, you know, because it just seems to be a little more tension and just like, it's just, it's like, it's like competition, you know, rather than, you know, but then we see drama at the gay clubs sometimes too, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> Um, but, uh, so, you know, it's just, uh, I'm just such, op like, I'm so, my, I've had, you know, friends of all labels, all genders, all races, because like, it's, again, it, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Like, you know, 
love is love. People are people, like straight up. So many people think being gay is all you want is to have physical, sexual relations and give in to those burning desires of lusting. It's like, no. It is the same way a heterosexual person would want to fall in love with them. Is it all about, are you, are you thinking only about sex when you want to marry someone and share your life with someone? No. You want to connect with them on an emotional level. You want to share goals with them. You want to share, you just want to go and do things together and, um, you know, go and eat, go out to eat or make, break, make breakfast or lunch or watch a movie or go on a walk together. It's, there's so many other aspects <laughs> to wanting to be in a gay relationship than just a sexual aspect. So that's just to bring that subject to to a close. Um, he was so cute. He's adorable, yeah. right? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Guys, it has been great talking to you guys about this stuff. Thank you guys for coming on. I know like we had one date, then we pushed it back, and I think I should just being open. Um, Thank you, everyone else. We had to come on. Um, we're gonna tag everyone. Like, so if you want these guys to like come on your show and like have special conversations with these people, we'll make sure you have all their contact information, whatever they're comfortable sharing. We're gonna tag all these videos um, so people can like watch them and share them with loved ones, with friends and stuff. And we just want to thank you guys for watching the Lamont and Leia podcast. Yeah, and thank you so much again for this opportunity because this is this is gonna be a movement right here. Yes, and if you decide you want to have a part two on this topic, I would love to come back because I feel like we, I feel like we could have talked for hours and hours about this. Oh, so, ditto. Yeah. yeah, like there was questions that we didn't even get to, so yeah. we might need to have a part. Two. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Today's life lesson is making a difference in your life and the life of others. Remember to be kind to yourself, kind and loving. Being the difference in your life, you will surely make a difference in other people's lives. And that is today's life lesson.